So in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about the brake system overall, but we're gonna focus on brake master cylinders. Hey everybody, this is Will. Um, I'm at the hangar right now, sorry for the noise of the cars. Um, this is the coil that I posted about earlier. I got it cleaned up. As you can see, it is a brass nut, but I do believe it's a steel line uh, with this fitting, uh, you know, brazed on the end. And this is the end, and there's a little rubber here, right here. A little rubber O-ring that goes in right there, and then the brass nut goes over it. So that's a cool thing. But I had a question about um, brake actuators or master cylinders. Unfortunately, I have a whole lot of them because when my uncle bought the airplane, apparently he bought a bunch of extra parts. So I've counted out these three because these three require an internal thread. And this one doesn't even have a fitting on it. Um, obviously with this uh, coil, you have to have an exterior thread that this goes in. So I have these two Scots. This is a Scott 22609-1. Two of those, and then two of these, which the data plate is so rusted i can't even make out what it is there's a part number i guess um i think these two were original with the airplane uh you know these work with when you press down on the pedal uh these serrations go down and then this little spring goes in and locks to hold your brake pressure and then releases and these kind of have a similar method uh, when you push down on the shaft then to set the parking brake you lift up on this little lever and then it holds it so here's my question. Which ones do I go back with? Which ones are easier to rebuild? Which ones have better reliability? Is it these or these? I think this is a direct replacement, but I don't know. I'm gonna ask for y'all's expertise. All right, looking forward to the comments. Thank you very much. All right, so this is Will coming back at you with um, more on the master cylinder stuff. Uh, these, the Scott 22, what was it, 22609s, they weren't too terribly hard to dis, uh, to take apart. Um, there are these set screws that are in these holes. These holes hold it onto this shaft, which the cup goes on too. The cup slides down on that shaft. And then uh, this is the inner shaft with a spring and this collar uh, goes through the top plate. So that's how you get that one apart. It wasn't very hard at all. However, there is a seal here, a seal here, uh, and also a seal here, which it's kind of a shaped seal, as you can see. Uh, the problem is it's on a nut here that is Swedged. You see how that's squ uh, squeezed down onto that square shaft. So I have to get a new one of these uh, when I take it off uh, just to change that one. So there's three O-rings there you got to change. Conversely, on the, I think Jody said these were good years. Super simple to take apart. Um, here's the shaft. Goes through this top plate. And on top of it, it has a jam nut and uh, your rod end there, if you will. Um, and then there's just a spring that goes down into the cup. There's a hole down there that the spring goes into. So the cool part about this one, super simple to take apart as well. However, this is the only O-ring in it, that O-ring. It's kind of cool, there's this pin right here and when the uh, shaft is in the top piece, sorry, kind of hard to do with one hand. When you release the brakes and uh, the shaft goes all the way up, you can see this pin contacts and pushes down. And I guess it makes sure that there is no trapped uh, pressure in the line. I thought that was a pretty cool design right there. But uh, literally, the only O-ring to change is just that one right there. So with that being the case, I may clean the paint off of these uh, housings um, 
I polished up the shafts just a little bit, get some corrosion off of them. There, it's funny, there is no O-ring in here. That's just a, that's just a bushing. Um, so that's the only O-ring that I got to replace. So I might do this set. Uh, that's the original set. I think this set looks a little nicer, but golly, it's more complicated because you got to do all that. And, you know, this isn't hard. One O-ring in here and one O-ring in the top plate. But uh, I just don't want to mess with this, right? I have to get another nut. I have to swedge it. So I think I'll just keep these as an emergency spare. Uh, but I'm going to re rebuild these and put them in the airplane. Thanks for the... Uh, for the input and always value you guys um, who have more experience than me in the Stinson, um, but it's always fun to learn about this stuff. And here's one thing to look out for when you're doing these, um, I think they're Goodyear brakes. It's on this shaft behind the pin, there's, it looks like a, a rivet. And you can see that it goes all the way through to this side so that holds this whole assembly onto the rod. And this one looks good. There's the rivet head on this side. And there's the uh, end of the rivet on the other side. So it's, it's carrying the load from this side all the way over to this side. Um, so that looks okay. But when I was inspecting the other one, um, here's the pin, there's the rivet head. If you turn it over, there's the hole, and you can see the other end of the rivet. So you can see the shaft there. See the shaft? So the rivet's not going all the way through. So the only side that's carrying the load is this side. Uh, this side of the rod is not, or this side is not uh, being supported all the way through the shaft to this side. So you know what's going to happen there is you're going to step on the brakes, the head of this is going to shear, then the head's going to fall off into your reservoir, uh, then you're going to have no brakes. So I've got to figure out how to get this pin out, which you'd think it would just come out, but the very end of this pin, right down here where my thumbnail is, is kind of flared out so it stays in. So you can't just pull the pin out this way. So somehow I've got to figure out how this pin comes out. That doesn't look like it comes off either. Um, so I can put a new rivet through there and make sure it comes all the way over to this side. Always something to learn about. Okay, so I think after looking at both of the different types uh, one's the Scott and one is the Goodyear. I've made my decision. I'm definitely going to rebuild the Goodyear versions because they seem much simpler and there's just one O-ring to replace. I do have to clean up the top caps. That shouldn't be too hard though. Then I'll try to clean up the outside of the reservoir itself. I'm too bad that the data plates are in such bad shape. The inside's also going to need a little bit of TLC. There's a little bit of corrosion in there, but I think with some Scotch-Brite, we can clean it up. I did see that in the parts manual, both of these are listed. Um, the black one on the left is the Goodyear. That's what came in my airplane, but the Scott is also approved. I also finished cleaning up the coils and pumping a lot of solvent through them to make sure that there's no dried up hydraulic fluid in them, blew them out. I think they're good to go now. Cleaning one of the brake lines though, I did find a corroded hole. So no big deal, just got out my tools and we made a new one. Just have to clean and paint and install. And just like that, they're cleaned up, reprimed, installed. All I gotta do is get the new uh, hoses that go down to the gear legs remade. And here's a little before and after. The top picture is when I got it and the bottom picture of what it looks like now. Slowly coming along. Well, that's it for now. Still got a lot more work to do, but go to my blog at november97954.org for more. And always, 
If you want, join the International Stinson Club at stinsonowners.org.